Steph with Tiny's Garden and I'm coming to you with a big surprise announcement first. This is kind of coming out of left field, but that's okay. I wanted to inform all of my garden gals and guys first that I am starting a second channel. This channel will be all about thrifting and estate sailing and all of the fun things of finding treasures. Thus, the name Tiny Finds Treasures is my new YouTube channel. I am coming out with the first video Monday or Tuesday of next week, shortly after this is released, so you can see it right away if you prefer. I'll put down below when exactly it'll be released so you can check it out. Please subscribe if you would like to follow along. I'm sure some garden gals and guys out there also love to thrift as well. So I wanted to keep it separate from this channel because I want this really to be for gardening because maybe not all of you are interested in thrifting. So I don't wanna inundate you with content that you're not interested in. So I am gonna keep it separate, but I'm going to keep you abreast of when my first video is coming out and how you can view it, which is on my channel, Tiny Finds Treasures. And I will also link it below in this video so you have direct access to that. Please subscribe, it really helps that channel get up and running. I love having this community here with you and I'm looking forward to building that one with a lot of you as well. So thank you for your time. I'm going to just give you a taste of what it will be like. All of these things right here is actually from my first video and what I found. So check it out because in case you see anything you would like to purchase, I am launching a Etsy store as well. What do you know called Tiny Finds Treasures? So Tiny's Garden's not going anywhere, which is great news, but I really get a lot of joy and have so much fun with thrifting and wanted to find a way to also bring extra income in for my family. And an Etsy store seemed like it could fit the bill. So it's been a lot of fun kind of learning and a huge learning curve. You don't know unless you try things, right? Plus, I will be giving all my garden gals and guys a special discount code if you wish to buy anything from Tiny Finds Treasures Etsy store, absolutely, absolutely no pressure. But should you decide to go over there and support that small business of mine, I am happy to give you a discount. Absolutely, and I wanna make it clear, absolutely no pressure to buy anything. That's not what this is about. This is just about sharing my experience and mainly sharing what treasures I find with you because it's, it's like an endorphin. Like when the queens, when the dahlias start to bloom, you know that high you get? I get that high over there too. One thing that's going to be a little different about Tiny Finds Treasures YouTube channel is the videos are likely going to be much longer than a lot of the videos you see on Tiny's Garden just because they're simply a little easier to make and a little easier to provide content for. So editing's faster, all of that. So I might be able to push them out a little faster than I can with Tiny's Garden. And I've got some downtime during the off season of fall and winter where I think I can push out a little bit more over there. So it'll be fun. It'll be an adventure. If you'd like to join and join the hunt, come over and subscribe to Tiny Finds Treasures. Again, I'll put below when that first video is coming out so you don't miss it. But don't worry, don't worry. Tiny's Garden is not going anywhere. We're still gonna drop down and get dirty. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. We are going to take a mini walk around the garden, a brief September garden tour, because honestly, I'm kind of starting to put the garden to bed by not paying as much attention to it. We had a storm come through that I posted in what I believe was my last video, and it really kind of did a lot of damage to the dahlias, and there's just not as much blooming right now. I also have my newborn twins, of course, Winnie and Maggie, who are three months old, so that has been taking some time as well, but I'm getting to the point where I'm letting things go to seed, starting to think about collecting seeds and all of that, so this is going to be a video where I show you one of my last harvests for the season, and then I end up with this beauty over here, which I'm loving, especially the colors, but I take you along with me for that, so let's go ahead and check that out. 
starting with some of the things that are looking decent in my garden, especially things like snapdragons that are coming back because they like the cool weather. They're a cool flower. So they have put on another flush of blooms because it's, it's cooler in the morning, even though it's definitely still hot here in zone 5B in the Chicago suburbs. My snapdragons in the front from earlier this year are looking tired, not as good as they did in their prime this year, but Zinnias are still decent. I am starting to let my floret zinnias go to seed, but I was able to harvest some of those. And one of my favorites, Benary's Giant Coral from this year. I've never grown that before and I love, I'm obsessed with the color. It's such a vibrant coral and it's a great name for it because it is coral as coral can be. I think it beats out Benary's Giant Salmon Rose for me, which is almost unfathomable. Can't compete for me, just can't compete. She's the winner. So it's an excellent zinnia. If you don't have it on your list for next year, I highly recommend it. My sunflowers are done. Something has been eating the tops of some of my things and I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a deer, but I don't know how they get to my back beds because it's fully fenced in. So the sunflowers have seen better days. I really want to collect seed from the Autumn Blaze Celosia, that is a Flora original. Those were so pretty earlier in the year. In the back, I've got my anemone beds and ranunculus beds that are empty. I'm still debating whether I am going to plant anemones and ranunculus this fall and let them try and winter over with a high tunnel, homemade high tunnel, but I just don't think I'm gonna make the time for that. So I'll probably end up starting those in the spring. However, my dog and my son loved getting in there and messing around in the dirt today, which, you know, good for them. Start them young. I've got another dirt guy. What you making, Briggsy? I'm um, staying for earthworms. Earthworms? You making them a home? Look at those skills. You're hired, Briggs. Yeah, Axel's not doing much work, is he? The Triloba Rudbecki out in the front looks fantastic. That's gonna be a repeater for me. It was new for me this year and I will for sure grow that again. A great little airy, whimsical filler. Now the Lysianthus and the Sahara Rudbecki have seen better days. They are all flopped, they're looking old, but I was able to harvest some that are left. They're not in the best shape, but I'm not just gonna let them go to waste in the ground. A lot of you have asked, do I collect Lysianthus seed for my Lysianthus? I do not because they are such small seeds. I don't even know if I could find them. I have heard some people do, so more power to you if you can. I personally do not. I buy my Lysianthus seed every year. If you have a great tip on how to collect Lysianthus seed, please comment below for all of us because obviously that would be a much easier, cheaper way to get seeds. The Floret Original Xenias have been beautiful. My favorite are the Unicorn Mix and the Golden Hour Mix. Golden Hour, and I'm telling you, this one down here is perfect. Again, I'm letting them go, so they're not quite in their prime, but I am planning on collecting seed from those so that I have some for next year. And Erin over at Floret did post a video about how they're actually gonna separate some of the varieties within each mix they released this year into its own mix. So really narrowing down color and shape, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to that because I think that's gonna be amazing for her to really hone in on all those varieties she just bred. As I said, Dahlia's I've not been great, but they have some buds. I did get kind of one big flush of blooms and had a harvest out of that. I do have a new favorite, the Sandia Summertime, so gorgeous. Is your jaw dropping? Cause it should be, gosh, she is beautiful. I worked with that earlier in the year. So hopefully maybe I'll get one more flush from the Queens, but it just hasn't been as prolific as last year which was just like a wall of flowers everywhere. I could hardly fit between the zinnias and the queens. Okay, back in here is where it's gotten really wild and kind of secret garden-like, which for those of you who are new here, I call dahlias queens in the garden. I could hardly fit between the rows and it was incredible, magical paradise. But that's okay, not every year is out of this world, right? And I have heard a lot of people have been having a difficult time with dahlias, so I don't think I'm the only one in that boat. I'll still be able to 
take out the tubers and store them. Please may I store them correctly this year. I have not had a very successful year storing them yet. I do have a full video about my whole Dahlia season coming out that covers everything really. That video is just going to take a long time to put together and it will be longer so I want to do it justice for you but it's it's been a wild Dahlia season. So I did end up making a couple bouquets one, this beauty over here, which I love, and another, which is still pretty in the girls' room, but definitely not in its prime and definitely not my favorite color palette. I'm being critical, but you know, we all have our favorites. So enjoy as I harvest and reveal these bouquets. Oh, also, also, a monarch butterfly loves my garden. I saw this guy last week and he has been all over my garden lately. I especially got some great footage of him today. I'm so happy because they are endangered and I'm so glad that he loves my garden and is here and I hope he's creating babies so that more monarch butterflies come into this world because they're so beautiful and magical. So enjoy that little footage as well. Here's a nice happy bundle for fall from the front. Digging this color combo here. I'll take it, I'll take it. Okay, here's my harvest. It kind of looks like an arrangement in and of itself, but those are just haphazardly put in there. I think I'm gonna try and separate out that bunch I had in my hand from the front a second ago and put those in one vase. And we'll see what we come up with for the other. Probably one of my last harvests here for the 2024 season. The twins love it outside and they're getting so big. I think they're gonna be garden gals. I'm gonna use quick dip 100 pour it into this ramekin for my red mahogany splendor hibiscus so it does not wilt. My bouquet making station is in my son's playhouse here under a swing set. So I'm gonna whip these out because it's nice and cool and then I'll show you at the end. Look at this queeny lime yellow, so beautiful. I wanted to show you, I added some king size raspberry rose straw flower here, and then I forget what variety this is, but I put the other one here just for a little more texture in the back of this one. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't like this one. <laughs> I need more of the Sweet Mahogany Splendor hibiscus to even out over here, and a lot of these are past their prime, except for like this unicorn one. Oh, so good, I love that with the purple lisianthus. That's Voyage to Lavender lisianthus, but it's kind of a mess. I mean, these flowers are not necessarily in their prime anymore, but, mmm. Wowza, I love this one. I mean, it's not bad in the girls' nursery, but it's for sure not at all one of my favorites. The giraffe and the triceratops seem happy about it, though. Huge fan of this one, though. Huge fan. I think that coloring is so fun for fall. Okay, so that's a wrap for this video. Thank you for watching. Again, a gentle reminder, if you wish to go check out Tiny Finds Treasures, that video will be released soon. I appreciate all your support. And if you subscribe, I really am so grateful that you continue to follow me along and support me in that adventure as well. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video here on Tiny's Garden. Always great to be with you guys and gals. We'll see you in the next one. Remember to subscribe if you haven't to follow along with all things garden. We'll see you in the next one. Happy planting.